As far as the introducing the subject, uh, I am just going to partially read from the foreword to the book, Representing the New Woman, Complexity and Contradiction. Um, and it's hard, I think, to define as an introduction to our panel discussion today. It is hard to define what we mean by the new woman, just as it is easy to find examples of her ubiquitous pre uh, image, not only in Western Europe, but throughout the world, in the era extending from the fin de siècle to the 1930s and even uh, to the decades beyond. Is the new woman quintessentially defined by the photography and film of Weimar Germany in such figures as Louise Brooks, Lulu in G.W. Papp's film, Pandora's Box of 1929? That is to say, is she seductive, self-aggrandizing and sexually ambiguous? Or is she more truly embodied in the courageous activism and professional expertise of the American aviator or aviatrix, uh, Amelia Earhart. Is the new woman envisioned as vamp or seductress, merely an updated avatar uh, of, of the time-honored female topos, a streamlined version of Delilah, Salome, or more recently Becky Sharp or Mata Hari? Or, on the other hand, is she a stalwart fighter for equal rights the suffrage and meaningful work for women, a battler for female independence and self-determination. Certainly, these two visions are not identical, and indeed, they are contradictory. Although there are many um, images, like Tamara de Lempica's self-portrait in a green Bugatti of 1925, showing the elegant artist at the wheel of her high-powered car, that attempt to weld the sexy with the self-propelling. Yet what all new images of the new women have in common, flapper or vamp, political revolutionary or suffragette, is a heartfelt rejection of woman's traditional role as it was defined by every society in the world. 